things off. Dust 2, it's a hell of a map, and we've got two fantastic teams taking battle. Base Clan will be kicking things off on the CT side. Astralis, they're already off. They were towards the B tunnels here. We've got Smokes, Molotovs, Flashes available, and in terms of the P250, is in the hands of the in-game leader, Glaive. We've got Nico going for the big play here towards Short. Sitting in the smoke, hoping he can steal a kill away, but presence towards lower needs to be quite careful here. Yeah, as the smoke fades, he will too. Lots of util on Astralis here, so an early casualty would really throw them off. And Nacho Magis, he was the blunt object. That's going to be a nice Molotov down. Didn't get to use it. Brokey with the first. They're hitting B. Cold has got a very powerful position here. It's very hard to knock him off his perch. They plan to run boost, maybe. That would be interesting. Oh, wasn't anticipating the close hold. And now in they go. Cold undeterred, bides his time. One shot will do it to seal the deal for this round. He's won. So does Rain. Neither have found it yet. Finally, Cold will break his silence and it should be the end for Dupree. Yeah, doesn't look like Dupree can do much more. He does get one single kill, but only two found in total there as Astralis will be giving out that pistol around its phase. Only have to be approached very comfortably and no bomb planted means we should have the eco here and phase clan. Will they be bringing out the rifles or focusing on those MP7s? Rain will kick things off and only plays towards short. Uh, a little bit streaky on Dusty as of late, Chad. Haven't seen the, the best out of him as of late. We'll hopefully see him uh, have one of his vintage performances. Yeah, look, uh, with all this Counter-Strike being played, it comes down to form on the day, and that's something that uh, we could look at here with the stat lines while we have this bit of a save scenario go on through. Out of the top eight players, statistically speaking, for the Road to Rio in Europe, we have four of them in the server right now, and this is the only four who are still remaining in the tournament out of that top eight. It's Device, Nico, Cold Zero, and Brokey. Above them is a bunch of names, Farley, Alu, Maka, and Zaiwu, but they have all been eliminated up until this point. So we're only dealing with that from five all the way down to Brokey's position right there, but three phase players within the top eight. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And we have got Astralis making their way towards short. As you would expect, just trying to get that bomb planted, and we are going to have Cold Zero rain using the SMGs and lighter rifles here. There's a kill available towards Olof Meister as Dupree rattles off a few bullets there with the P250, but Nico will take care of business. He's been in great form recently. As Chad just mentioned, one player goes down, but here come the AK-47s for Astralis. And uh, we've seen a lot of dust too recently. It's actually seemed to have balanced out somewhat. It doesn't seem to be the T-sided brutal affair we're used to. And uh, we'll see if Astralis have got anything to say here in round number three. Yeah, it does seem that uh, Dust 2 CT side is becoming so, so fast moving, though. You do have to keep up with the T side of all of this. Yeah, these. you have to take a lot more risks, I think. We're yeah. seeing a lot more gambles and pushes, and we'll see if Nico can take one of those right here. That's going to be the scout tag towards Dupree. Challenging soon towards T spawn, and he can feel them coming as well. That grenade bouncing towards Xbox. Actually, Magis pushing forward. Wow. He knows he's got a kill available there. Does take a scout bullet to the chest. But still, the opening kill here for Astralis, and they should surely slow things down. Sure, Nico's dead, but he's taken two members oh. down to 30, and Brokey wins the duel. That's a crucial victory. Zipex going down. He was full health, so actually, two players still with scout bullets lodged within them. Cold Zero goes for a very aggressive push. Trying to contest that bomb before it gets across. Rain knows they're low. You can see those wild bullets through the smoke, but they haven't connected. Three versus two, and Magus and Dupree are low. We are going to see a smoke being deployed by device, but before he'll try and get the bomb down. Takes it out for now, trying to bait the CTs in. A decent wallbang attempt, I have to say. Device takes a few bullets from all off my step, but still the C4 will be planted. Magus low, but uh, will be device to pretty much confirm this round now. All of my step probably can't even consider this one. Throws in the double door smoke to feign out that he's showing some interest, but uh, he will be saving an AK-47 as he makes his way towards double doors. And then we have a first round for Astralis. Money pretty good for FaZe Clan. They're going to get 1,400 in the next round. So saving this AK, they've got a buy available going forward. Just quickly, we haven't recapped these two teams head to head in any of their last outings, and they have actually played this year. Uh, we saw them go toe-to-toe -to -toe within the ESL Pro League Season 11, and it was a 2-0 in Astralis' favor. That was within Stage 2. You guys might forget how all that one went down, but it was only back there on the 7th of April. It was a uh, overtime game on Nuke, unsurprisingly, where Astralis took map number one, which was the pick of phase, and then moving on to their own choice of overpass, they blew phase out of the water, 16 to four. So a completely different map pool this time round for their little bounce. And if you want to reflect further back to 2019, well, maybe you remember the uh, shellacking that Astralis gave phase clan over there in Beijing. That was uh, a rough series, to say the least. Well, I think the Zonic just uh, kind of reiterating the thoughts we often echo about how, uh, if as an individual, you know, you have to keep up with FaZe Clan when they're having a good day. 
but they, they won't win unless they keep up individually. And the fact that that sentiment's coming from Astralis' coach only reinforces it when we say it here in the server. So only a scout for Nico. One of them was on 1400. I think that was Rain, so they've managed to make it all work. Yeah, the save day K47 certainly helps things out, and you can see them posturing Ooh. outside the B tunnels here. Cold Zera and Brokey on a bit of an excursion to find an opening kill, considering they're on the back foot somewhat. You can see they've got a distinct lack of utility here. Just a single kit, and Glaive, he's detected the pressure. So he's going to reposition. Device spotting that scout in towards the side. Looks like he's good to get the kill. Not quite. Second chance here. Cold Zera will get hit first by Glaive. Nico's ready and willing. He knows there's an open pit and he's still taking fights like that. That's impressive. He still oof, gets spotted by device. He keeps getting this fight. It's nerve wracking. How is he so willing, so able? And he's actually for caught Dupree on the edge of the smoke. Great shot. Olof bides his time on the edge of the smoke. Anyone does peek together though. They're so coordinated, but there's enough of a gap. He gets both spread out just a little too wide and the trade wasn't possible. Great stuff from Olaf Meister there. Just toying with the edge of the smoke. Has left them in a five versus two. He's in a great spot here. Glaive not going to check him out of car. Guaranteed frag. And now Device, we've seen him in the pit for a while now. Hasn't been able to find a kill. And makes his way towards T-Spawn. Going to be Glock out for now. In terms of CT presence, there's uh, Cold Zero waiting for him. Probably gets the kill, to be honest with you. But fires the shot off all the same. And he's going to make his way back towards Spawn. So they are going to hunt him. You can see four players entering the long doors right now. He does go down. It's a big round for FaZe there. And Nico getting a great shot towards the long area towards Dupre. I think this is just straight up through the smoke. Yeah, indeed. And then Olofmeister, great play. And he's the way on the edge of that smoke. Take two of them down, get towards a car, and confirm a third. Yeah, Glaive wasn't ready for this, and that was the, really the final frag of the round. Just Device getting hunted at the end there. So, round five, there's 2k around, so it's only going to be your favorite pistol for the Danes into this one. A bit of a pause. I don't like that I'm seeing two CTs it, at spawn. Yeah, it's probably, uh, probably yeah. a bit of a tech issue here. Yeah. Just a small one. Fingers crossed. It looks like we're getting straight back into things. Fingers still crossed, actually. How many fingers you got to cross? I've got, well, I've got two crossed. Cross your toes I'm, as well. I'm not capable with shoes on for the toe situation. It's got okay. a broad foot. Well, normally you're wearing the Crocs, so <laughs> I thought maybe it would be possible. But the I crocs, wish I was, I was wearing my Crocs. I actually made a, chan a choice, active choice. Not I was to wear them? About to walk downstairs in my Crocs, and I was like, you know what? It's upper bracket. It's playoffs. You're going to put some shoes I'll on I'll put some today. shoes on. Okay. Well, it's good that you put pants on today as well because it was getting a bit weird. These are my new... Well, he was yeah. hanging out in the kitchen last night in the boxer shorts. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. No, that was that. this morning. That, that was this morning. morning. <laughs> that was like about two days ago. It was yeah. this morning. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know what? I got to this stage now, guys. That was before my afternoon nap, so it kind of blends into one of those. Oh, yeah. You guys have mastered the early yeah, morning rise. The... I, I couldn't nap again today after being woken up, but... Uh, I gave it a good shot. Chad's shot. grumpy today, guys, just so everyone's aware. Four hours sleep. I've never seen him on four hours I sleep. I usually get eight Ooh, like, a ev zone. every night. The only Six days is like the bare minimum. Yeah. Oh. And the only days that I don't sleep are travel days. So this is uh, this is new territory right here. We'll see how I can operate. Chad's going to get all snappy at you like you're an airport attendant. Uh-oh. Bang. <laughs> going for it. Doesn't quite hit the shot, but all off down to 62 nonetheless. <gasps> Well, this is going to be Astralis on, I guess you could call this an eco. No armor, no nades. Just going to try and get the bomb down. We saw them attempt it towards short once before, but uh, let's see whether they've got the same approach in mind. We've got a couple of players make it three towards long the bomb, however, at short. That's there we go. Kill. And that's going to be <gasps> a lovely shot from Glaive and a bit uncomfortable now for FaZe, but the bomb, I thought it'd like to go down towards spawn. That's normally a guaranteed victory, uh, but they're actually applying a decent amount of pressure here. I don't think this will be a foregone conclusion, but that shot might do it. They're so low, but unfortunately, uh, unless you can translate them into frags, Olaf's having a little gallery, popping off the heads, keeping himself in a headshot angle, and yeah, looks good and tidy now. Zipex, only four HP and a Glock, so I'm... Those are the ones where you just stop talking. Let's just quietly guess how, how much time it takes for Vizipex to die. Could be very quick. I reckon he dies at 30 seconds. He's gonna draw this out. Okay, start the, the timer. 10 more seconds. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no, chill, Zipex, chill. Give me five more. No, oh. okay. He goes down all the same. It's four to one. Phaser off to a great start here on Dust2. The map pick of their own. I'm working on some IT issues as well over here, so I, I apologize for my lack of. I was about to inquire, Chad. Really, actually. Yeah, really trying to fix some stuff here today. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna what be are honest the issues? with you. What have you got going on? I don't know what happened, um, but we normally have a caster dashboard to give us information to the game that we, we would be on the scoreboard. It doesn't uh, work today. Right now, it, it's not working. Uh, but Skybox is. So okay. So we, we have that at least. We'll keep our eye out then for some bits and pieces, some lovely jubblies. 
as we'll get into round number six. It's going to be a full buy on either side here. Initial flash from Glaive just to bait out a bit of utility if possible. Cold Zero, though, he'll, you can see him thinking about it, but he's one step ahead. He won't be giving in just yet. Over towards Short, Astralis will find themselves now up against Nico. You might not know he's the main author on Dust 2. CT side, you'll find him by the car or the A ramp. Sometimes challenging towards Short. That's what he's hoping to do here. Looking for, I can only imagine to be the jump across for a peak or a boost. See if they walk into the crosshair here. Yeah, a lot of AWPers will play on the lip that Nico currently has in front of him. And Device would have had the line. Now he's got to line up. Oh, I'm actually going to steal this. Hang on. Is it just for short? That would be real nifty. I think the, the level of difficulty right there is... Uh, nah, man, that's... A... I would say extreme. <laughs> it's a lineup and a jump throw. Maybe a crouch jump, either way. Running through perfect flash, but Rain undeterred. If he slides to the left here, he could find a gap as Zipex is ready for it. Two players to defend B. A lot of ground covered. The defenders can't really help them. It's Brokey and Cold Zera cornered and about to meet the wrath of Astralis. Here they come. Molotov's been thrown out. It's looking fantastic for the Ooh. Danes, but here comes a big spray down. Cold Zera trying to find a second before he goes down, but it's in vain for now. It's going to be Zipex planting the bomb, and he does so successfully. Three versus two now. Nico and Olaf Meister poised to go for this one. It's the AWP as well for Nico. Might want to second guess that because I don't think it's going to work out. Astralis, they wrote the book on Ooh. saving weapons yeah, on the CT the, side. The grenade's pretty decent. Oh. Doesn't quite do it. Zipex down to nine. Yeah, if only they'd coordinate those nades. I was about to say as well with an incendiary, we've seen after Zaiwu uh, kind of, I, it was the first time it caught my eye, having the incendiary towards Bricks. He was to hit a nice little lineup for that retake and it made it look so much more Didn't we, doable. you and I work that out last we did, week? We yeah. sat there, I can't remember it now. We were we underhanding did. it with the door. Yeah, that's it was a different right, approach. yes. Jumping underhand. We were doing the underhand, it landed at car slash Bricks every time. That yeah, but like, it's, it does make retaking B less of an issue. You smoke that door side as they usually do, um, an incendiary there, a smoke tons, Bob's your uncle. Unfortunately, the chances of having that much utility for a retake on Dust2 is is minimal. Well, Bob's my granddad, so it makes it a little bit harder for me. And that's actually a true statement. So, Raj, can we take a quick little look right now at the AK-47 on the T side with the Vox Eminor uh, stickers when oh. we find it? I think it's in the hands of... He's guessed Magisk, but for now, we're going to have to watch that cross now with Gucci. Clay's gonna fly straight out on this oh, one. They've got is. a long corner smoke. <laughs> Vox Eminor stickers, of course, an Australian <laughs> squad that could, and so can Clave. The plucky young team that could. Love kangaroo and all. Great times, happier times, perhaps. Yeah, surfer hair flowing through the breeze. Youth. Not a care in the world. Sand. Plunger under his arm. <laughs> Plumbing contract for when he got back from his land. <laughs> Well, let's get back into the action. It's the opening kill for Astralis. Nico has been tagged by Device, I'd imagine, as well. Down to 17 points of health. This looks nigh and impossible to try and defend. There's only one player at the A side. He's got 17 points of health, and he's just throwing everything he's got, just begging them Please. to go elsewhere on the map. Please don't come near me. And uh, I think they're going to have to save at this point already. Nico will just have to get the hell out of there. Oh, they're just conceding it. Oh, please yeah. don't lose that orb. Zipex trying to throw more bullets through the smoke. All good. And that bomb will be planted. Now, Astralis. They have managed to coordinate such a perfect T round that they don't lose a single player. And they plant on the A site on Dust 2. Very lovely stuff. Yeah, this is an opportunity for them now to start building a bit of a surplus of cash here. They've got everything uh, they need other than nades exiting this round. So things are looking very, very good. But with the saves that I assume we're going to see quite a lot of here today, just with the way that these two teams approach Counter-Strike, loving to play the percentages, we will be seeing uh, quite a few standoffs like this. It seems a bit odd, but uh, getting into a round like that, which Henry had just posted, you could see Nico's low on HP. All of yeah. basically could down for free. There's not a lot of damage done. To go for these scenarios, it's almost like you're just throwing the round away. We're, we're seeing a lot of, the, as we say, going to the pregame here. Dust 2 is lending itself to a more gambling nature on the CT side. Just because that yeah. B bomb side is so difficult to hold, you have to be trying to stay one step ahead of what you think they're going to do. But that's like a player like Glaive's dream, because as soon as he knows he's inside your head, he suggested a few things, you operate on your EKs in a certain way, they start adjusting, they start taking timeouts. That's when you can start really toying the other one, Dust 2, because they're CT, the manager required there is very volatile it's a high pressure map to call on and we will see the orb coming out it's kind of like a, a boat that has multiple holes in it right because you're trying to plug them all and you just yeah. don't have enough people enough fingers to plug all those holes at the start of the round unfortunately yeah certainly a fun map but you need a lot of coordination and understanding of how your teammates on the other side of the map are operating how they're getting information and when you need to push and uh give them info so they can operate accordingly we will see all of my stuff Trying to get some of that aforementioned information now for his teammates. He's getting towards the long doors. 
Now, Glaive, he's a bit of a master of that, likes to get in there himself. It's device though at the orb. And he sets up for what could be a B split. We've seen the contact smoke in towards tunnels. Cold Zero, though. This is an adjustment from phase two of them. Holding that door's position. I feel like middle is the, the key to defending these B splits because obviously you've got a very tight choke, but you can lock that off with a few smoke or an HE or the back of the platform of an orb. It's middle is the main issue. That's when you'll feel the real pressure from those splits. So it allows you to transition back towards A quickly as well. But as soon as it's been exploited and that weakness has worked, for example, the successful B takes, now you have to be paranoid about that, but then you have to also neglect long. It's, you've just been talking about it. And there's the same smoke from Nico. Gets a nice one on to short. That's curious that he's saving it that late in the round right here because that could deter Charles a little bit earlier. But here, now that they're ahead of it, they can see it's clear. They've extinguished it and they can still set up and attack this A bomb site if they like. And well, with all five members right now towards the cap position, it should be an A attack. It certainly should be. Rain's hearing steps. He's actually gone for the fight and he wins it. That's going to slow them down. That's going to encourage them and corral them in towards A. This is the go. Green light. Diving down. Oh. Najeski wants the fight and he's actually managed to take down Rain. <laughs> this is very entertaining counter strike day. You can see how reactive Astralis are being, feeling out every maneuver. They've got 10 seconds remaining here. Trying to get the bomb down from short. This is beautiful stuff. And there will be a couple oh, of kills brought okay. back. Dupree with a backstab from Hell there. That's the B bomb site. His teammate Glaive is isolated, oh but he's God. rising to the occasion here. Glaive can back up for this moment only. Olaf Meister knows it, takes care of him, but takes a lot of damage on route. One versus one. Glaive knows he's got a huge advantage here at Olaf Meister, trying to cheese it out. Get a long range distance here, but it will be Glaive just hitting that one bullet required and he'll pull the round back. Beautiful stuff from Astralis there. Very reactive, great CS, especially even Dupree as well. Look how much he just bought them in terms of space and time. Yeah, I mean, that looks so different if Dupree hasn't gone for the around the world flank. What a dream setup that is, to be having the bomb going down on A with 10 seconds left and you've still got the flank on that B. That really screwed FaZe Clan. And that's found the equalizer, equalizer as well. Keep, keep an eye on the Deagles from FaZe Clan. It is unarmored, so anything that they can pull off in this one will be a surprise. Just one more little detail on that round with Magus jumping into spawn. The reason that he would have felt comfortable doing that is because Rain swang the swang. Swung mid, right? <laughs> Rain is swang. Bloody hell. Rain is uh, Rain's an A defender. So the fact that he was fighting mid like that, you would assume that there was two players over towards B and that the other A defenders would have to be playing retake. And that is probably why Megas dropped towards spawn to stifle that, allowing Dupree to come for the flank and get the multi. Interesting. So that there's all nice the little, little details, because yeah. as soon as you see rain and you, okay, well, it's highly unlikely Nico and Olaf are both on the side. Someone has to be watching long. You assume it's going to be the retake A, and that's the uh, result right there. So good stuff from Astralis here is they're going to take the lead. Yeah, I'm enjoying this, I have to say. It's the nice fast-paced game as well. Everyone's hitting their shots. Everyone looking pretty up for it. As we get into round 10 here, one round separate into two teams, five to four, Astralis still looking very good after giving up that pistol. We are going to see them with the orb from device, four AK-47s. The death of the Krieg is officially here now, and we couldn't be happier, to be honest with you. And both these teams, FaZe never really liked it. Astralis weren't even buying it towards the end of its life. So uh, everything's looking great out there. I won't, uh, I won't uh, be too worried that it's gone. No, I don't think anyone cares. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm moving on with my life. And take some long control. Interesting. Just off the back of a flash, he concedes it. And they're leaving the bomb at spawn. So Astralis, they don't plan to take any sort of commitments here. They definitely just want to take that space away from the CT. So now they know no information long. A molly car keeping that pressure up. Bomb's on its way towards the B side. And oh, here comes the push. Oh, the bomb's enough. Do they dark. do it dry? They just got to walk in? This is going to be quite the meeting in upper B. Knives out for Glaive, he moves back, he pits Dupree on the end of the fishing rod here. He spots the barrel, double kill is lined up, and he nails it. Dupree might have won the round right there and then. He opens up the B bomb site, and now just one player waits outside. That is going to be Olaf Meister, who stays around for now, suggesting he's going to give it a go at trying to deny the crossover. The smoke going down, that might just call it already. I think he knows it. Starting to peel off now. Doesn't really look like a challenge at all. A second smoke confirms it. This is beautiful stuff. Just making sure they don't give this away in any imagination possible. Chad, can we play a game? Like, so, I've never competed in Tier 1 Counter-Strike, right? Okay. But oh, I've watched a lot on. of Counter-Strike recently. All right. So, is it a fair possibility slash assumption that 
I've watched a lot of FaZe Clan. I know that on the CT side of Dust 2, they, they push up a Dark as a pair. Yeah. Is it a chance that Dupree sitting in that angle fully informed that that's a very possi possible way to win a round? And I would say that there's even a high likelihood that Glaive intentionally made footsteps running away to bait them into the upper Dark and further. Ooh. And the reason I say that is because they had clear run at long, right? They had a clear run. They had control. They had pit if they wanted. Yeah, sure. They knew that nobody was corner. They were spamming over towards the car position. They knew that nobody was home. Well, if nobody's home, where can they be? They're gonna do something. They have to do something. Oh, it's so smart. And they won the round. I haven't really been watching the screen. I've been looking at Chad. Uh, looks like a couple of weapons were saved. Just the one for Nico. He'll be keeping hold of his AWP. Unfortunately, we've got a replay of exactly what we're talking about. This is a phase clan maneuver. They didn't have the info long, and Dupree, he was so ready for the second, takes two heads and immediately starts to hold W. Yeah, that's a great pickup to get. Pretty much guarantees the round for yourself, and they managed to get a couple more kills after that as well. It's just Nico that survives with the AWP. So they'll take a tactical timeout. The first four phase hit, 6-4. Money is okay with the saved orb. They could get out a couple of SMGs, some deagles perhaps to go with it, but uh, looks like they're going for the more conservative approach here. Rain, just with the pistol. A couple of smokes in the mix here, and no other utility purchases thus far. From CZ for Brokey, we'll see the other boys limping. Imagine Cold Zero will get a deagle as well. Quite a specialist with the weapon. Goes for the scout instead. Okay. It's dangerous, at least. If they get a couple of tags here, but that means Australians need to be sloppy, and that's not what we've seen out of them in these last couple of rounds. It's been very clean. They've been uh, making sure, clearing all the corners, using their smokes and utility on point and well here's a chance i hate this fight it's so nerve-wracking nico wants it again though if he was to uh, surely not clear back device still trained on him oh and he does miss the timing safe for now and looks like magis can dupree have intentions towards middle nice little boost try and force him out of position if there was anything from the cts but just that all don't forget that astralis's primary objective here is going to be not running into the only dominant weapon on the server for the cts here so plenty of time left in this round. Astralis with the spread default for now, but you can see them starting to set up for the mid to B split. They want to watch Shaw right now, but three outside of those double doors. Bombing up a B as well. There's going to show a little bit of presence towards A potentially. There's a timer on this. There is with the long control here. FaZe know they need a bit of intel. They pushed up a B before, this time getting two players in towards the long doors. Wrong boost around the corner. Seeing a lot of that these days. We saw G2 in the previous matchup against Vitality dropping out a lot. Led them to success in the end, and here we go, Desert Eagle. Oh, it's no so one's watching long, and there's a couple of kills potentially. Oh, he gets both of them in the end, thanks to Rain. Broke, he's caught one in the trade, and tag, Cold Zera. He's hit one through with the smoke, they're gonna win this. They only had pistols. It's all onto device, that molly does look fantastic. It should force Cold into the fight, and he hits the shot regardless, FaZe Clan. They're always good for a couple of them. Armored Deagles, and a victory. Yeah, things tend to get out of control there at one stage, but it will be FaZe and the Desert Eagle was the long push coming in, and what a push it was. Astralis, uh, I have to say, Chad said there was a timer on it for that reason, I'd imagine, right? You have no exactly. idea whether they're going to be coming behind you, and that's always the danger of Dust 2. That's why you have about... We normally send a map to Inferno. You've got all five to Banana. You have about a 15-second window knowing the map's open, and you have no idea if they got intel or backstabbing you. And so, yeah, dead on there, and they pay the price. Yeah, I think the assumption to hold up, this could be... Oh, he's fluffed the move, and he should cancel this. He's going forward. Zippy, he was on a mission, and it wasn't a good one. Ooh. Yikes, he's lost his teammate device as well. Magisk very much committing around the smoke and just a wild spray. They're all too aware of all the tricks of the Astralis trade and they will punish. Looks like it could be six, just Glaive and Dupree heading over towards the doors position. They got the bomb on their back and a chance, very small one, to take this fight. Nico looks like he's set in a perfect spot for at least the first. He's got his teammates. Ooh, he actually <laughs> went for the flick, madman. Yeah, well, at least he spotted one, so uh, Rain can start to be a little bit more active at this point. He hears him jump up towards short. Doesn't look good for Astralis to do much with this one. Nico getting to more defensive position, and we've got Rain locking them in. Oh, they haven't been super aware of the flanks in the last couple of rounds, Astralis. And that's going to be a very clean round for FaZe there. Barely took any damage on a long spawn as well. Oh, what did Zipex screw up so much there, Chad? I didn't uh, quite he, catch it. He was trying to jump through the doors, but he hit the box, which ah, it completely stalled him. So he was delayed out of the doors there. And at that point, the Molotov had already settled. The flashes that were being thrown over for him for, were wasted. And he continued forward anyway. It's always a tough one, right? You, you, assuming that you're going to be able to get towards that pit position, but it's spawn-based. And if it's spawn-based, that means you can't fluff your lines. You have to make sure that you're 
getting on out there as quick as possible. Because we've seen, you know that CIS stuff we were watching, like the likes of Spirit and, and Simon Gaming, they were, if, if they had the good spawn, they could fly out so comfortably, yeah. like without with no fear. And then you see the difference of one slight slowdown on that strafe. Well, you're you can, eating nades, flashbangs, and everything. I, I think the sign of confidence that your team's grenades are good is when you run out the doors and you're looking at the ground, right? Because you're trusting yeah. your teammates' flashes to get you all the way we've to seen, pit. To we've take... seen Chris J looking at the ground all the way to pit. Yeah, and, and that right there means that you have a very good routine, at least, to get you that much control, or at least you have faith in, the, in, in your teammates. So as an entry fragger, you definitely need to have that. And it will be the force by from Astralis here. Magus is actually onto the scout right now. He has a Tech Nine as the sidearm device. He's out this time round. There we go. He's got a nice little path as well to Lawrence who pick towards A. He knows there'll be a player towards the pit. That's going to be Rain. And again, oh, oh, Astralis being caught out. They're not super aware of these positions. And a Rain doesn't nail the shot. He'll deploy the flashbang and try and get himself out. But it will be the opening kill with Zipex. Landing on their feet now. Oh, three with a double kill towards middle. That's massive. He's device has got no armor on his AK. Okay. Interesting. It doesn't seem like it's going to cost Astralis, but that is peculiar. An yeah. unarmored AK coming into round 30. You definitely don't see too many of those. Dupree's had three rounds at this point with huge impact yeah. in that regard, right? At, at least three that he, I'm He was so struggling far. earlier this week as he well, was. right? Yeah, we, we were highlighting that he oh, had a, a bit of a stinker. Oh, I think it was it. against G2. Yeah, that's right. <gasps> okay, Device nearly running out of bullets. We'll find it just before and oh, Nico him. actually... Oh, no, it's the way around. Let's okay. go down. It was the scout in the end. Sure. Magisk will grab himself that AWP. So they're just exchanging spotless rounds. It's a different look. Haven't seen that in a while. Well, th this is what we're talking about with all the fingers and, and the leaking bow, right? You have to, if you want to actually deal with long, you're going to need all three individuals there. We even see teams do a four-man lean. If you want to make sure that they can't just rush B, you need to have two players go towards B. If you want to make sure they can't just run straight out mid to B, you have to have somebody either aggressive catwalk or close mid. So what you're telling me is we need seven CTs. There's not enough to defend unless us you're Astralis. Then you might have enough players. I'm not sure if it'd be allowed just yet, but uh, <laughs> look, it's such a difficult map, and that's where Henry was talking about the gambles. It is that if the T's do, do have good long spawns and you gamble incorrectly, you do a three-man B stack and they do something else, you've lost the round. You just end up saving. Exactly. Yeah. So Dust to it needs some changes. But that's just the way the map flows at the moment. And well, Brokey with the AWP, he's not going to get off the mark right there. He'll be dropped. Mid to be is off and on up. And oh, they bumped each other. They're going to punish so hard here. Glaive responsible for Rain to push through. And he does manage to make some space. Cold Serra has defended B and Rain while blind. He walks into the flames. It may not matter. Cold Serra, he says, get the hell out of my sight. 2v1. Well, Zipex, we know he's capable of winning these, but for now. He's in the two versus one. Olof Meister trying to encroach his position from T-Spawn. It will be taken down here. He's been outflanked. Olof Meister picks up a freebie, and it will be 7-7. Fantastic work there. As FaZe just gunning them down towards middle. Even a cheeky team kill thrown in the mix. And as Alex said, didn't seem to matter whatsoever. A very efficient mid-hold. We're seeing those uh, double mid players that we highlighted earlier actually coming up trumps. They lost Brokey early. I mean, that was a disadvantage to FaZe Clan, but dealt with so well without Cold's triple kill, they do not translate that into a seventh. Great defensive work. He's really been... I mean, we saw the tweet from Nico. Admittedly, I think they live together, so I'm not sure, sure. if this was coming from Nico's fingertips, but he did say Cold is the best teammate ever. Glaive has found Rain, and now Olof immediately oh. equalized. He can even get a second here. Maybe even a third. Glaive on the smoke. He's done it. The wow. Swede sends them packing. That's huge. Olof Meister, another player has been struggling on the road to Rio, but that's a real world-class play there. Very confident spray down. Leads into a four versus two on a massive round as well. This is going to take eight rounds on a CT side of Dust two and now just device nothing really to do with this one we'll see whether he gets any kills there's the box stickers chad you can really see them i was just watching them right kind of transition into a different light yeah maybe i want some fancy stickers well they're only two grand each oh, so that's, oh, oh. that's very Reasonable. That's, Certainly. that's real people money too. That's yeah. real, people, real money people money for fake stickers. Yeah. Incredible. Up and coming pop punk band Fuzzy Girl with their debut single, Internet Girl. You're here listening to ESL Radio. I'm Machine, <laughs> and we're into the pistol round. Yeah, that reminded me a lot of our lifestyle in a way. Just uh, less sun and gaming and all that sort of stuff. Really. Yeah, that's, practically. Uh, we got same. flamingos though as well, so we're, we're basically same same. Yeah, same sort of vibe. Trio. Yeah, Henry can skateboard. He was gonna. Kind of changed his life with skateboarding yeah. for about I think so, it was a week. You, yeah, had? there was a solid week. Yeah. Looking for a battle on long. Zipex changing his mind. He sees the smoke over. 
towards CT spawn. Magisk, he's going to have a lot to deal with. He wasn't ready. Still pulling pins. And now, well, FaZe moving their pins towards the A site. They'll be getting the bomb down. Brokey planting safe. And the retake on for Astralis. It's looking pretty good here for FaZe Clan. An opening kill. The bomb planted. And a five versus four. Zippy already been tagged down to 36 as well. And Device looking for the one taps from Shaw, but no one offering themselves up here. They're going to have to fully commit. They've got a smoke and a flashbang, but no diffuse kit as things currently stand as they'll coordinate their players. Now they're going Ooh. for it, and they get the first kill. Vave's holding it, though, and he's missed his shots. Oh, Rain no. goes down. Dupree with another huge impact. Nico can't do enough, and a just successful defuse will come. Come on in, Glaive securing the full 10 seconder, but that is impressive. That was a 5v4 retake. Yeah, against Astralis as well, and they only lose one further player from that. Dupree, he gets three, and I have to say, the coordination was a little bit off there for FaZe. Rain missing a whole clip of the P250 in the back, and his teammates not doing much better there. They don't do anything, but the bomb gets planted, and they combine the third. So they're going to take an eco here. Desert Eagles with a smoke trying to get the bomb down from short, I'd imagine, and we'll see their gun round start following shortly. Yo, well, this game couldn't be any closer, boys. I know the scoreline's tied at 8-8, but so are the opening jewels, currently 8-8, uh, and if you look at the multi kill rounds 10 apiece so oh, wow. we uh that hasn't happened in a long time yes completely level it's the trifecta as all things should be balanced second round of this first half then dust two was the mount pick of phase clan lots within their arsenal but this was what their coach ynk and the squad landed on as their best bet Looking to put the best foot forward and just the Deagles was all off. He does tag up Dupree on B, keeping that presence and keeping two CTs busy as they prepare for the push. Actually going in pretty flashed. Just one single flashbang. Zipex has one as well. If they can get this goose frag, it's Brokey with the info. He only had the Glock, hoping the Deagles could have done more, but Device's double has really s slowed things down. Yeah, they really have to trade at least one kill here to stand a chance, but there it is. One does go down, and probably their chances of getting a plant as well. But they've already got the plant and the pistol, so they'll still be able to buy regardless. This would have been a bonus uh, of some sorts, but uh, just looking for that extra kill now. Device on for the ace. Just to know that, not really that exciting against no armor, but uh, there we have it. It will be 9-8. to eight. Astralis taking the lead now, as Alex just mentioned on their opponent's map pick. Here's the replay of Device getting it done. Flash for his teammate. Nothing to write home about, but uh, denying the bomb is a big deal. So some of the tendencies to look for for the FaZe Clan on their T side right here. We know that they do enjoy a fast mid biff, getting straight out the doors if they know the team is doing a heavy long and B defense right there. They've got all the executes you could possibly imagine. Set pieces towards the B side. They've got a couple of mid to B ones. Even strats that we make up for them when they miss throw their smoke. So <laughs> uh, it is just going to be the hard B on the first gun round. This it is, is We're off. They're sending it. Oh, Magic for some reason. He's always good for two. This time, not at all. Olof down to 40, but the B site is lost. And if I've learned device as he moonwalks up the ramp, tries to hit something on the cross, this will just be the save call. And that's what we're talking about. That round, we only have made just in towards B. They haven't been showing anything on that side of the map. So now Astralis will have to reposition, work out whether they need to consider that as a possible threat going forward or whether they'll keep things going just... Uh, put it down as a, a difficult round for mages. Yeah. You're to find two every single time. Right? Certainly not. And, and something that's always um, impressive is when teams start to exploit that. When, I, when we watch Fnatic in similar circumstances, Golden would just keep calling this fast B because the CTs are like, they won't do it again. They exactly. won't do it again. And you can really get in each other's heads. It's so Chad enjoyable. Chad will tell you all about that. That's his favorite way to call. We, uh, we once won a tournament with uh, calling on the CT side of train, three people push inside to flank yard because we just kept losing the yard. Yeah. I think we did like six rounds in a row. Well, you just ended up like going full flank main or you're dropping pop? No, dropping like behind yeah. them and Oof. just like, because they're so focused on clearing everything out on yard, you just do the same strat. I think Havoc called that one there. That's a long time ago now. I think we've gone all the way back to 2013. <laughs> so Respect to really Havoc. have to go uh, back in the, in, the, in the time traveling vehicle. While you're there, mm. stay a year, buy some Vox Emina stickers. Worth two grand. Worth now, two man. grand nowadays, Gomez man. Is kicking himself. He he could have held on to those. Would be like Bitcoin for him at the moment. He had yeah. over like two hundred of those. Oh, what a muppet! Oh no, you don't like that. Gomez, Kermit, the whole gang. <laughs> <laughs> Big bird. <laughs> And we're cross-contaminating Sesame Street with the muppets. There. That's, <laughs> did that's, I do it? Yeah, uh, oh, no, did. I did. Phew. Oh, Big bird. But uh, it's all good. We'll see whether these oh. UMPs can 
cause any damage going forward. It's going to be Dupree rotating over towards B, and that's exactly where Phase are ending up here. Godzera, great shot towards the double doors, completely blind as well, it seems. And there back we go. and forth we go as an absolute brawl. Good flash from Aegis, and it could get him one more frag, but the Flames will find him first. Three versus two, still possible for Astralis here, but they're stuck in towards CT squad, oh. and Rain wants to keep them there. They've got nades, they've got Rain, it's all set up perfectly, and the Phase machine has generated a tenth. Device locked in towards the CT position. Rain has essentially won this round four, then there's nothing How Device could do. Blind was called zero on that first kill. It still look looked like flashed, he, he was absolutely fine with it. Precise shot, no problem. And uh, we'll see Device presumably going down to Rain here in a second. He has been spotted, so he might be able to take one down with him, but Device won't be surviving this one. One, and done. No worries for FaZe Clan, they've got loads of cash to splash, but they do reach the double digits first. And another B hit, so that's two successful B hits in a row. And now Astralis are going to be kind of gimped for utility. This could be the perfect storm. Let's see that again. So Olaf, it was the Molotov onto Magisk. I thought he'd done enough, but he just got burned. I think he was flashed a little bit. Couldn't see where the damage or the spread was coming from under the scrutiny of the FaZe players in his sight. And he just burns down. Brokey's Molotov did take the final B defender down there. And so into round 20, it is going to be just a smattering for Astralis. A scout for Glaive, he can treat himself. That right there, that round, it was very desperate for Astralis to cross mid doors and get towards the B bomb site. The whole, I guess, flurry of frags that went down or could have gone down across middle with Nico and Rain trying to push out the doors, they just dropped the Molotov and ran across mid because they knew they had to get to the B bomb site to help. They knew that they had to get on in to make sure it couldn't just be taken. And that unfortunately is a sign of what we were talking about earlier. The fact that they have to go with these stacks over to other bomb sites. They can't just hedge two players into the B bomb site, assuming it will be that side of an attack. And here they're left with, well, as you mentioned, not a lot. Nothing that uh, should be hugely exciting. There's not even any nades or flashes to come yeah. up through. There we go. Smoke and a Zeus. So, so now, now we're I'm talking. excited. Now we're talking. They're sending an extra player over towards B, but that's made his tags as well. So Brokey doing initial damage here. They send two players towards B. It's going to be just uh, spread default for phase. They know they're up against not a lot here. Just wait for the initial push. Once you find that, coordinate yourselves for a five-man take, but uh, no rush to do so. Wait for these sort of approaches from Zipex. Oh. Nice grenade through the mid doors. Lands Shane. on top of Glaive. <laughs> Even snatches the scout to the other side of the door just to ensure it can't be scooped up. Dupree wants to have a look. Getting close to those doors. Challenging when back's a turn would be the ideal setup, but for now, Brokey's trained on it as they progress up. The Zeus is out close mid doors yeah. as well. I don't know if anyone's going to challenge though. Well, the reason he can do this is because they've already used the close Molotov. So they will have to now clear it again. And he might have an opportunity here to get one of these kills. It, it shouldn't be more than just a comedic moment. Give here it to go. us. Ah! <laughs> it certainly was, Chad. you got to admit, that was funny. Yeah, well, it's like he's out. Uh, oh, he's, no, he's oh, just showing so that. It's a uh, <laughs> series of blunders here. We're going to keep going. We've got anything left in the tank. Oh, oh no. no. We have no! Magisk has made the impossible happen here, and it works out. The eco victory, the Zeus kill, the team kill from Brokey. Oh, no. Everything that could have gone wrong certainly occurred to have a phase. We know what happens, Jab, when you lose that sort of round. What Go happens to after? Overtime. No, um, this right here. <laughs> Go to overtime, yeah, straight up. <laughs> no, normally with phase, what happens is they get a little bit tilty. It takes them a couple yeah. of rounds to recover, oh. and then the game uh, starts becoming a bit more of a back and forth affair for them. Luckily for them, it is already a back and forth affair, so it's I not like they're going to, to squander a massive lead so like we've seen in the past. I don't mind this. As I was about to say, you would normally see Nico go for the hero AK and he'll go for a, a drop down on T-spawn out those mid doors. That normally is their, their sort of reaction to that sort of round. But as you can see, he can actually afford the AK-47. That's not a big deal. They can go PD-50s around him. But I would imagine uh, the, one of his teammates are going to scout and they'll try and cover him when he drops down, goes to the middle doors. I've cast him do that a dozen times. And uh, this would be the exact sort Look of round to deploy it. Yeah, this is the sort of round his teammates get towards B. He'll go down towards uh, the drop-down boxes and we'll see whether it works out. But it is the double orb. And I have been super impressed with Dupree's secondary orb contributions on Dust2. He looks amazing on this map. Currently top bragging as well. Good form today. And Nico doesn't go for the drop-down, but he did have the good spawn. We'll see if he wants to go towards Shore here. And uh, in terms of the smoke, Olaf might start lining one up. So he'll deploy that towards Xbox now. And Nico just to lead the charge. He got a flashbang for the first corner. And a second, both from by Cold Zara. He can bounce him off the first window here at short. And Bonk. a good nade. Ouch. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Rain down to 50. So Nico, he's uh, just floating amidst his 
unarmored opponents, or rather teammates, I should say. Brokey, for example, has just taken another, another nade to the face. He's working Ooh. with a little less health. So they do not get spotted by device as they leave Catwalk, which is valuable. Strahd is still operating under the assumption that there is a gathering there. Possibility towards long. A good flashbang from Cold Zera could set Nico up for the frag onto Zipex. He's playing blue bin. Oh, the Ooh, nade timing. The nade great. again. They're playing this so well. <laughs> they haven't even seen anyone yet. They've lost about 200 HP as well. We'll see them actually make their way out towards long. Remember, Nico has invested in that AK. They've actually got another rifle there as well. Zipex goes down and Dupree with that secondary orb. He's under a lot of pressure here. Nico. He'll get the trade, and we actually got a man advantage now. I thought they were going to win this round. Blake can't do anything. He's been painted into a corner. Four versus two. Device watching the cross. They've got no smoke. That is one advantage they have here. Bomb going down a crossover. Yeah, what do you do to get the AWPer off the line? Olaf had a great idea, but Device too quick. This is a problem now. Because, Brokey could drop. Yeah, but he's only got the Glock, right? So oh, it won't yeah. do too much. Oh, that, that works. That really works. That's suddenly going to enable the bomb to be thrown across. In fact, Brokey, that's smart, using the peon that is Brokey, but they have got a Molotov. Will that bomb be able enough. to go down? It could very oh. well be, but Nico hits the shot from winning it once. Now FaZe hit them back with a taste of their own medicine. And there it is, Nico. The in-game leader manages to pull out the AK-47, and he is a hero. Three kills in the round, 368 damage. He gets the job done. Device did his absolute best to deny this round as well. Two excellent shots towards that crossover. Looked like it was done there, but Nico, he came in and hit this showstopper. That's the AWPA going down. His teammate scoops at the bomb. Huge trade as well. Great effort with that incendiary going down there. Chad was right. That could have been enough. It could have. I mean, he was low as well, right? He was sub 50. And there was a Molotov at his feet. He just takes the fight and wins it. Balls to the wall. Aggressive towards long. Taking that control. A deep smoke gives Astralis that info. Up short, though, they're going to be throwing out smokes of their own, and that nade looks destined for damage. Will half Nico's functional health pool. And they want to try and pivot straight into Dupree. Not a Zeus this oh, time. He's next. got an M4. And the bomb's been delivered to the other side. Brokey takes matters into his own hands, but doesn't hit the shots. And this one, it's a bit of a Damn. shambles. Really enjoyed that from Dupree. Thinking on his feet. Upgrade to the AK-47. I couldn't have worked out better from as well. The first two players, the AWPers, and then we saw the, sorry, the AK user and the AWP behind them. They all got blocked up. They couldn't trade out the kill. He managed to get three at Nico. We'll have no chance of clutching this one out. Five versus one. Less than a minute. Look at them actually sat on the bomb with four. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very scary. Device will collect it. 11-11. Keeping things close. And I'm, also, I'm not surprised at this stage in the competition. And this is, yeah, perfect. You can see Brokey had to try and do something with the pistol. It was his only way to get him off the line. Didn't work out. Triple kill from Dupree, and it's refreshing to see him at the top of the scoreboard. We've talked about it. He's been one of the few members of Astralis that hasn't been necessarily riding that consistency wave that everyone else on the squad has as of late. A couple of slip-ups, a couple of losses to, well, Fnatic, who have recently fallen off, and Mouse Sports, who have recently fallen off. So that's the only two scalps Astralis have fallen to recently. This is the full eco for FaZe Clan here. Astralis going to take the lead once again, the double orb setup. As we said, it's a, a beautiful one. First kill for Zipex. He's towards short at AK-47, just trying to keep this round clean. They've actually got the best Dust 2 setup you could ask for. Three AKs, two orbs. That's about as good as you could possibly get. Might set them up for the map going in their favor, to be honest with you. It's only yeah. 1,900 is the loss bonus for FaZe going into the next round as well. So they will get the buy going. They can even get the orb out if you look at the money for Olaf. He will be able to drop that over if they do require. But with all those bits and pieces in consideration right now, look, there's a real opportunity if Astralis can deny them getting the bomb down within the last few rounds here of second half of the first map. They can deny the buys to come on through and, and continue to apply pressure for, on Astralis here. As well, you can see Brokey, he's uh, trying out for the World Cup team. I didn't know. Do Latvia have a World Cup team? Uh, I assume they do. I guess everyone has a World Cup team. Oh, yeah, I don't that's what really I mean. know a lot about football. Yeah. Nor, nor do I. You're I asking the wrong people. You kick it in the goal? I mean, I, straight no, in the I know goal hole. I, I, I'm definitely yeah, the goal hole. Yeah, that's a technical <laughs> term. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we will see. <laughs> this is what this is classic phase here. This is this is what they love. Alex, you do such a good job of explaining why they don't. I do really much. do, and I'm so glad you asked, Henry, because <laughs> what we're seeing here is the full time, full length of the round, 18 seconds left, as Phase hopes to pull out all anything, their though. nades. That was weird. They That's did, right. Oh, still didn't do anything. Oh, can he burn to That's, death? He that's can. smart. So he is denying them getting. Three or six hundred dollars. Zipex still gets the cash, fair enough, but uh, it doesn't give him the satisfaction of pulling the trigger. 
Yeah, Which that I was, think is something. That's what it's all about, right? You know, Zipex don't, don't want to give him the extra satisfaction. Yeah. It's way too it's way too good to kill Nico, and so he'll do the uh, his best impression of just standing in the flames. Cooks himself up nice, medium rare Nico. 11 to 12, the scoreline for the first map. This was FaZe's pick, but as Henry has outlined the round before, and something I'm very excited to see transpire, is the dream setup for Astralis. He's still got hold of all those AKs and the double AWP. Let's see if FaZe can knock him off their perch a little bit. Hey, Green, who's the AWP at B? Is it Device or is it Dupree? It's Dupree. So the AWPers at this point are playing spawn-based because we've seen them at opposite sites, and that makes a lot of sense because you can get your AWPer to the corner of Long to take the jewels there early. Neither of them had a fantastic spawn that round there, but it's good to see them playing a little bit looser, a little bit more flexible. They're able to fill the roles and gaps of one another here as FaZe Clan, they jump on up. They'll get cat control for free. This is a very, very slow round. You can see the bomb all the way towards the back of Death Alley, just near T spawn. One dealing with any aggression to upper dark. Outside long, cold zero as per the usual. That lurk smoke, Dupree is going to... Ooh, I thought he would push forward there to give him some information, but thinking better of that. Still with those three AK-47s on the CT side, Astralis are set up for success here. FaZe will have basic map control, however. Two towards short, the bomb's down towards middle. That'll be on the back of Brokey. So the air execution, very standard finish for a T-side team on Dust2. And you can see the A-side relatively open right now. They're really focusing towards B with two players in there. One towards CT spawn, transition play from Glaive, and he'll transition over towards the A ramp. He can feel a bit of pressure coming in now, and he would be right. They're getting ready as they throw in their flashbangs. Wow, Rain's got straight down. They're playing on splitting through middle. However, Dupree gets enough time and enough wow. space to actually get the first frag. Device picks up Nico on the Lurk, and now they try and pincer in. If they can get into this site, there's still a chance. They need yeah. these frags now, though, and already Dupree's caught another. I was going to say, there was still a pretty decent chance there. Those two players could get a kill or two. Uh, but now just Brokey looking to do cause financial damage. Every kill he does get might deny an AK-47. He'll not get another one there, and it's a very convincing round. And the loss bonus, as Chad already stated, not massively high here for FaZe. That's two rounds. Make it three without the bomb going down. Uh, so we will find them at around $2,500 per player. 13-11, Astralis on cruise control right now. There should be no danger of getting this round away. At the very top end against Desert Eagles. No armor. That's the conversation FaZe have had, and it does mean we're going to be having another one of these. Um, if it does go the same way as it can, you'll notice well, that they'll be taking their time, I, talking I, it out. I just have a quick one here, and, and this is uh, going to need production's assistance, because this should just be another round where they kind of limp on in. If we're able to bring up Pitcher and Pitcher with Skybox right now, we can talk about one of the yeah, highlights sure. of last round. I didn't prep anybody. Here we go. Okay. So what I want to know, and while this round's going on, guys, we'll jump into it, but Dupree just here and the transition with the AWP on the B-bomb side. So I'm going to play this out. You're going to see what happens. There's going to be a smoke that comes towards Dark. We always talk about that. He's going to move straight away from it. Him and Magus are going to change. Magus has a rifle. Dupree obviously has the AWP. Yeah. He's going to jump up towards Window. Still two of them alive, so we still got a bit of time here. So that as, was the pivot. Yeah, but what I want to show here is as soon as they come out mid to B, I want to make this go a little bit faster for everybody if we can. Uh, as soon as they come out mid to B, instead of getting isolated here, they're about to come out any second, he'll go for these first shots. Oh, come on, game. A little bit quicker would be lovely. Comes on out. He goes for these first shots, and then he'll reposition over towards car so he doesn't get isolated in the site as they team on through with the mid to B, and that sets up a better crossfire with him and Magus. So I liked it. I loved it. I'm sorry it took so long, and there you go. Perfect timing, though, because in 3, 2, 1, we are back on in, and it's a buy this time from FaZe. Yeah, and FaZe need to pull their socks up here, boys. It's going to be four rounds in a row for Astralis on the CT side. That's looking very good for them, I have to say. And we'll have AKs across the board if a phase, no AWP available for Brokey, but in Serenity currently sat on 7 and 16. The AWPers haven't been delivering in the last couple of days. The major survey is through the smoke, through the wall, in the head. Olaf Meister is dead. And uh, we've got a four-man setup towards the B tunnels as well. FaZe don't have anything to speak of at the map. Yeah, that, I think that death's taken them by surprise. I mean, oh. you really weren't accounting for it. Look at the damage. They're oh. inflicting. Oh, they could have killed him. And they will kill one. Nico goes down to the device orb, and he's already bopping out of there, strafing back to support long. Oh, the death. Look at where Olaf's body is. Like, Cold Zera to the left of him. That's the rain. Uh, that's Nico, excuse me. Olaf is right in the corner underneath Rush's cam. That's how, like, look at the angle. Rush, excuse me, Magisk wall banged him through the smoke at an angle like that. Such a good, precise spray. And it's another one for Magisk. He'll get his second. Round one, unless Brokey and Rain can make something materialize up against the Astralis CT force. 
Magus is low on the B bomb site, so if they do manage to get a mid to B split going here, they're onto something. Brokey has a smoke for CT spawn, a Molotov to deny the push, and a flash to get them over into the site. That's the best play they've got. Big nade, again. <laughs> <laughs> Big spray down coming in. The double wombo combo from Dupree and Glaive. AG landing at their front door. Their loss bonus is now um, $2,900. So Galil's AK-47s, as you can see, that's reflected now. And it's going to have to take four rounds in a row. I feel like Astralis have actually set up a really solid CT side. It's dynamic. It's working out. They're nailing their shots, mixing things up overwhelming their opponents through the smoke as well multiple times two smoke kills there to kick things off yeah and rain didn't see a single enemy exactly. he caught three nades yeah, over the course of the right. round and starting with a bang Olaf Meister will eliminate glaive throws his 16th death onto the in-game leaders board and long control immediately seized you can see how they bounce around now to change the approach device was hoping to catch Nico over the edge of the smoke bit of a role reversal now previously Nico was dancing with device on his CT side. He had a scout though, a bit of an upgraded one for the Danish sniper. If Magus goes down into there, oh my God. Great shot. The device is having a mad one and Rain's dead. That's Magus, he's locked them in now. They are absolutely cream cracker here, boys. <laughs> they are chocolate bourbon. <laughs> Rich tea, hobnob. What I'm trying to say is it's over. Two left, one on the edge of the smoke. It will be Olaf Meister giving him the easiest and slowest peak. Nice work from Brokey, but only with a Galil. He's presented three to keep FaZe's chances here on Dust2. Dupree will... Ooh, I think he got spotted. Brokey does peek in and hits a great shot. Now upgrading. Maybe there's a chance for Brokey. What a clutch player he is. He's disappearing to B. He anticipates the long. Can he get on out of cover fast? Can he get out of there enough? Tugs in. Just about safe. He's going to B, boys. He absolutely is. This looks great for a one versus four clutch. Brokey will get the bomb down. Magisk, he knows he hasn't crossed over towards double doors at least. And we'll see Brokey challenge. He's got him if he actually goes now. He's looking towards the window. Oh, he has no idea. Magisk might have it now. He's assuming he's coming from tunnels at this stage. Oh, he seems to... Oh, did he catch him? Oh, I think he saw him. I thought it was the backpack for sure. He's done it. Brokey. Yeah, he wins. What a clutch king. The Latvian, Latvikan. 1v4 keeps phase in it. Absolutely brilliant scenes there from Brokey. It didn't look possible. One versus no. four of the Galil. It felt like they could even throw players at him, which they did. But he took them all down. Remember, he hasn't planted the bomb. He hasn't done anything. Everyone's challenging. And even Astralis makes a mistake sometimes. And great play from him. But a 1v4 of the Galil probably shouldn't be happening. Well, that right now would actually be the, the pivot round for the game right here. Because, look, there is 15 rounds on the board for Astralis. They're on the CT side. That's where the economy can go through a few more woes. We're highlighting right here Dupree, the highest fragger right now on the side of things for Astralis. And Brokey, with that, he's been able to get himself into the double digits. He was actually struggling for the squad up until this point. The lowest fragger for the team still. But uh, Astralis will get another shot at it. They will have two more buys this round and the next very comfortably. So they have uh, plenty of shots here to take FaZe Clan out of the equation. With only one individual surviving, that loss bonus coming on through. You can see their buy is not fantastic. Once again, Galil's out on the field. A couple of AKs. We'll make that one. And the AWP in Brokey's hands. So it's still not a great buy for FaZe. They need to win this one and they need to win it cleanly. All right. It's a difficult one. The three Galils with four players going down in the previous. They will have the all for Brokey, but still, he'll have no grenades. First bit of damage towards Cold Zera. And that was a long doors, courtesy of Dupree, throwing the HE in towards those top of the areas. We're going to have Brokey looking for the short pushes. So a flat default here. He manages to save the team. Wasn't posting a massive score before, but takes himself out to 11 after winning the 1v4. 23 kills for Device, his rival in terms of the sniping responsibilities. What a clutch that was. That might do wonders for the phase. Morale. Time will tell. Three rounds the gap. Run boosting Nico across. This is the same as his cousin gets set up. Maybe he's been taking lessons and tips. Either way, nothing found on that run boost. Still 5v5. So the execution will be coming in. You can see them setting up for us. Four players there. One towards Long. That's still called Zeras. So they have the smokes, the flashes available. But can they get it done? It's been so vulnerable. TAG damage when they commit. Dupree will spot at least one on the corner there, and Nico not far behind him. Oh, they're already going very wide. Olaf takes the first, but Glaive sensational device as well. 
The Pops three of them here. all falling in very quick succession. A tough duel for Nico as the flames pop and cold. He's so late. He's been trying to contain long this whole time. And as his teammates have fallen, he just jumps straight into the first. What a shot to vice hold.